Yeah, they're going. They're going to. Magic can ha- can handle it though. I oh like, yeah, I mean, I, Showtime's got a big personality. Absolutely. So I, he definitely knows how to manage people. Absolutely. I'm sure. Or he'll get him in that corner and threaten to bite him or something. You know? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not touching it. that. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even. I wasn't even gonna try it. No What's up, chance. beautiful people? Games Music Life Podcast, episode 72. 72. What's up, man? I'm your residential gamer, Nate Ear. This is Kev, man. The Breaker Chains, the finisher of games and reviewer of them things. All right, yeah, just rolls off, man. Yeah, you, you know, know what I'm saying? That cow kid. The, the cow kid. Yeah, put some respect on it. Right, right. So listen, <laughs> kind of a slow week, but it's a big week in our in our eyes. We always got stuff to talk about. Always. So we're going to come back and talk about these topics today, see what's going on. How's everybody doing, first of all? Leave in the comments. Let us know what you guys think. Um... What are we playing? Like we always start off, man. So listen, I'm playing Prey. I know you finished Prey. We're yep. gonna talk about that. Um, I actually started playing a little bit more. I'm almost done with Uncharted. That's what's kind of pulling my time as well. And uh, a little bit of 2K. And then I started playing a little bit of Madden too. Okay. Oh, watching. you went back and started playing the old Madden, huh? You got hype. Yeah, you know, I saw I saw the championship that happened. I got a little hype by it. It's all crossing patterns, man. Madden is still broken as ever, but it got me hyped watching that. So I played a little. I played like one or two games, got washed, and then got back out of there. I can dig it, man. Yeah. Uh, no more Zelda, huh? I, no, have, I have no. noticed that that's been out out of the way, no. you know, for for some time. Like, I thought I thought it was game of the year, man. Go, I thought it was the best. It ever. was, it, bro. It was, it was a good game. It was a good game. But okay. once it was done, there was nothing else for me to do. And then, you know, what killed my spirit too was the DLC that got announced. Talking about it was going to be horde mode. I logged off, man. I'm actually about to sell my Wii U yeah. with Zelda because I had no reason to play it. And I see everybody's picking up Switches now, anticipating Are more they? games to come out. Because a lot of people are moving their switches because all they want to do is play Zelda on it. So I don't know, man. I, I, I thought I thought the Switch at this point was dead in the water, man. I, I thought this was uh, week two of the you know no Nintendo watch because they've got nothing going on at the moment. As you really. see, it wasn't much to talk about. Yeah, I mean, like I mean, the Switch is dead. Like they've got yeah. nothing else to play over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much over. I, that was really kind of where the Zelda question was going. Yeah. You know, yeah. if anything, we're still cracking in that front. Uh, you know, they're on the shelves. Yeah. Uh, you've walked on by it a couple of times, I know. They are. You and, know what? I went um, to go Mother's Day, matter of fact, just passed. Mm-hmm. I was in Target, and I went in there. They had a couple on the shelves. Yeah. Had all the accessories, all yeah. the cases, all the pou- pouches. Sounds about memory right. Memory cards, the whole shebang you wanted to get. And they also had that f- three-year-old game in uh, in uh, Mario Kart. They're trying to finesse you to buy and man no yeah i mean you know hey i'll I'll keep a watch out for it man Uh, this is gonna be week two of uh nintendo switch is dead last week started off and uh this week is gonna continue it but anyway uh for me i'm playing i'm playing prey again man finished it went right back around and uh it's actually uh going pretty good Um, that's interesting i want to pick hold on put a pin in that because i know you you said you played multiple games over and over but you went right back in and played prey again i did it was that good huh it was that good it really really was like i had to play it a second time to even appreciate it more really i felt like there are a lot of little details in the game that that first playthrough you're not really going to pick up there are a lot of uh jump scares and stuff like that that first run through Uh so the second time when you kind of know what to expect the jump scares move out of the game and you get to focus more on the mechanics and all the different ways that you can kind of work through things and it's so dope like there's a there's a part in the game where you have to go into a room spoilers you know for uh, it's it's nothing major but uh, you know spoilers for anybody who hasn't played or plans on playing mm-hmm. um there's a part where you have to go into a room man and uh how you get into this room is completely up to you man there's a robot that goes by every 30 minutes so you have to you know go back to that room and it works on real time hours so wow. you have to really go in there you know on on the half hour or on the hour mm-hmm. uh you can uh, break through the window and, you know, you can morph into a a different object and kind of jump through the window to let yourself into the room. You can break the window and uh, shoot the lock control uh, from the other side. Like, and it doesn't tell you any of this. It's just like, hey, listen, figure it out. Uh You know, this room is locked. How are you going to get in there? It's up to you. Really? And just the little things like that make this game absolutely fire. So there's no linear way of playing it. Not at all. Multiple ways you you can handle things. Okay, so when I get done... We can actually talk about how we got past certain parts. I'm sure to be kind of like Zelda because Zelda did have that aspect of it, yeah. Where it was different. No one played the game the same. There's different ways of figuring things out. So it's kind of like the environment is a boss in its own right. It know? is. It okay. is. But but this game also is very creepy. Like okay. y- the way that you learn how to use even the little details like the darkness, not using your flashlight so that way you're not discovered. Uh, you know, kind of figuring out a strategy for how you are going to use your level ups and stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. it, it really makes for a dope game. The second experience was much 
is better than the first, Thank and you. I really enjoyed it the first go through. I'm gonna tell you with me though, it's like even playing it because I've heard of, like you know I had to get over the fear of playing scary games. You already know I, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised dude. that you've been rocking with it so you long. Know, it was just because I wanted to play a good game. Yeah. Everyone was you know got rated real well. I wanted to play something new, and I hipped you to it. And then for you to jump in it like you did, I'm like, all right, I gotta finish it. I'm gonna keep playing. Yeah. But once you get past the initial jumpy parts, every now you know what I mean it's like it's it's okay. And plus it adds a sense of fun to it. And the only part I'm having a hard time with is resources because I'm building med kits, building shotgun shells and everything if i got my shotgun i feel like i'm good to go yeah. you know but if i don't have the resources to build my shotgun and plus you're only shooting from the hip so i'm shooting i, I didn't mess the ground up if the ground had a health <laughs> bar i didn't kill the ground like 50 times um but once i don't have any more resources i find myself just running for heck just running hey listen that, that's there. a good part of the game too like uh what i definitely appreciate about it is it's not a it's not a traditional shooter where you go in and you have to fight every enemy like if you run then you know hey maybe running was the best option in, in you know that particular scenario yeah um and the environments in the game they are going to leave you in situations where hey maybe you can't shoot you know mm -hmm. uh maybe you need to climb rather than try to fight all these uh these enemies you really have to kind of think strategize plot out what it is that you want to do in that game and okay. you know whatever you may come up with if it works then it works i actually glitched the game the first go around really yeah there there's a there's a portion of it where you have to get on a plane well you know i couldn't figure out what was going on there <laughs> not going to tell you anything uh -huh. or how to figure it out so i just kind of uh i, I jigged my own way up <laughs> you know jumped on the top of the plane man opened the uh, opened the door from the roof and fell right in now i i came to find out later that that was completely wrong really that i, I needed to let out a platform that would lead me directly up to it would have made it a thousand times easier but hey it's it, it actually well it, it did kind of work but the game glitched out it was like Ugh. really <laughs> yeah, it was like oh <laughs> you aren't supposed to do that like you, you skipped a lot right <laughs> you, you skipped a lot here <laughs> so the next the next objective it was kind of like uh we don't know what to do right. but uh yeah yeah but still dope dope okay it was fire okay when i get done with it we'll, we'll go through again and um i should do a review of it see what we both thought of it yeah all right man so you know we're saying it was a little bit like zelda Big, some news came back from Zelda, which I don't understand this well, more and more I think about it. But Zelda's actually coming to the mobile. It's coming to your phone. Now, they, they haven't said whether it's going to be the same exact game as the Breath of the Wild. Okay. But speculation is everyone thinks that that's what's going to be. That's going to be that's that big. game. If that is big. But doesn't that, doesn't that cannibalize the Switch? <laughs> Maybe once again. But I, I, I figure it's probably going to be either a companion app kind of game mm -hmm. or... It will just be a way to farm microtransactions. Well, because the thing about it is, though, that's, that's weird, though, is like, you know, they already said the Switch is built on the NVIDIA Shield architecture. Same, right. same processor, same everything. Our phones are more powerful than that. Yeah. So right. to say the game can, I mean, theoretically, it could work it on, could. you know, our phone. So if it's the same game. But yeah, the switch is definitely done, man. Like I don't even see why. You know, what I, don't, mean? Like, I don't. I don't think that that'll be the case. Like, I hope. I hope. Not. I hope so. Y'all. It, it's gonna have to be something different, man. And they they never do anything that sweet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you that never get anything game, that you know? good. You know that Mario run was man. Yeah. Come yeah. on, man. That was Temple Run with a Mario skin on. Yeah, it was like a. Yeah. So and it's supposed to be Animal Crossing is coming to the phones as well. So Nintendo's going the phone route. They're trying to get you know a different a different bag. Trying to drum up some buzz. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. All right, man. So yeah, so I said I was playing Madden, and we did, it did get announced that Tom Brady is the cover athlete for the Madden 2018. Yeah, and he's mocking the curse, man. Hey, listen, you man. think it's you think it's true? If anyone you know can break saying? the curse, it was, it's, it was it's, a good uh, run, Tom Brady. Nah, it's, it's Thomas Brady, man. He's nah. born in a manger. Nah, it's it, it, I think it's gonna be a wrap for Tom Brady. <laughs> like he's just pushing it too far. <laughs> Like he's you know what I'm saying? It. He beat Goodell, man, won yeah. the Super Bowl and all right. that. Now he's just he's just feeling too good. Right. He's overly confident. I mean, what Brady's like forty. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? And the best idea you can come up with is let's hop on the Madden cover, hey, the GOAT man. edition at that. Hey, you're right. They called it the GOAT edition. Like, come on, man. Like, you got to at least. It was a good run, Tom. <laughs> it was a good run. You know what I mean? You got to laugh at them doing that. Like, he is really just throwing it right in Madden's right. face, he, right in there. He he's going to get benched and then injured. <laughs> <laughs> injured in like a, 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 a field cart accident or I, something like listen, that like, it's gonna be bad the Patriots will figure it out man I did see we, uh, the Eagles signed LeGarrette Blunt today too so shout oh wow did so they okay that was, that was a good, good pickup for you guys um, but I don't I don't know man I think that if anybody can do it Tom Brady can do it um <laughs> But yeah, I just I don't. That's I don't high know. hope, man. I, hey, listen, I I'm with you on that. If anybody could break it, man, I think it'll be Tom Brady. But I just feel like he's putting too much at risk here. Like 
He's just doing too much. He's feeling too good. Hey, that curse is real. That curse will humble you. You that know what I'm saying? Real. It might be the only thing to kind of bring him back down to earth. You know what? The curse is so cold. Like, I believe it will let him have another perfect season. Mm-hmm. And, you know what I'm saying, uh, get another goofy catch to lose the Super Bowl <laughs> just on the strength of the Madden curse. I'll tell you, the thing about it is, though, is, like, the curse actually gets people the next year. It's like, they'll come out and have a decent year that first or within that year. No, I take that back. Cause a lot of people be having those. They fall. It'd be right after. It'd be right, be right after. after. Right. Yeah, yeah, man. It's right gonna after. be tough. I'm telling you, man. Pick six in the Super Bowl, man. Book it. You silly, man. Book I don't, it. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Um, but hey, I'm, I'm excited. I do like the fact they call it the Goat Edition. I like that Tom Brady owns it, man. Like you know, y'all think I'm the goat. I think I'm the goat. Man. I wear Uggs. We gotta, we gotta address the big elephant in the room. What's and that? that's that you were excited about Madden again. Like, what I is was. going on? I'm, you know, what has happened? It's like the the chess match of of Madden <clears throat> always excites me, man. How did they fool you into being excited again? I don't know. They pulled me in, Paul. <laughs> they, you know what it is though. It's like you know when you my, first of all, my Eagles are good. It, football does that to me. Yeah. Every year, when you, football is the only sport when you go into it, you feel like your team has a chance. It doesn't take to like week four or five. You like, yeah, we suck, and then you end up letting it go. Or whatever so it's like football is you know my favorite time of the year so it's i don't know man you know it's, I, I love the fall i love football season that, none of this has anything to do with mad man they've but been it, putting out a garbage product for last years. year wasn't bad no last, here you no, go no, you, no you know so you no, bought no, last no, year you started playing and I then did. you abruptly stopped i'm gonna tell you what got me though was the actual my player the mutt the mutt got me building your team it was, together. for like a week for like a week or so. But Kev, that's all. Listen, we have it on film, man. Like, like, if, if you were getting look, the EA check. I, I will the, take the it. The check started like, coming back in. The pay I figured happened. it out. The pay <laughs> happened. They, no, they, no. they started coming back in. <laughs> no, no, okay, no, it all no, makes sense. No, but I tell you that it's kind of sweet though. Is how the draft happened. And then they were incorporating those rookies into this year's game already with those my player cards. Yeah. I thought that was kind of sweet. Um, but just it, it, one of those games that keep changing. It keeps adding new things into it. You can get like the ninety nine overall uh, Brian Dawkins card and or something like that. That added a good. You're aspect not fooling of us, man. You we're still talking about Madden. You're yeah, not going to talk about yeah, adding stuff into this yeah. game and making it better but week you know, by week. You know what it is though, too. What Madden is when I played Madden a lot before, it was me and two of my buddies. We did a franchise. Right. Well, those two friends are very busy, so we don't they don't have time to really play like we used to. That was the only reason why I really played Madden. I didn't. I mean, getting on and playing head to head games. I, we did it a couple of times on stream. I got washed. I don't have the time to invest in it and Madden is one of those games where you gotta invest your time your effort you gotta build a scheme together and also another thing I didn't like about Madden too was you ended up doing everything that the masses did so if everyone was doing yeah you had my, to yeah to, in order to compete you gotta yeah, be able to do to. and I didn't I thought the it was, cheese I, plays always come exactly out. and I prefer the, the, the chess mat aspect of it which I would like for it to go back to but it seems like with all this new engine they got which I'm excited about the Frostbite engine which is a change from last year um, which I think it is. I don't know if it was changed or not. To be honest with you, I don't fact check. But if it is a change, then maybe that'll be different. So I'll give. It, I'm not gonna buy it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not buying. It. I didn't buy 17, so I figured I liked it. EA cut me in. That's all I want. Yeah. You know, say, cut me in, man. S- send me that. Uh, G- send me that review copy, man. The, uh, I'll, I'll talk good about it. And you know, me. hey, listen, I you want me on your side. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look how well 2K <laughs> is doing. You're, you're they're flourishing. Already get, you already get the 2K check, man. Let me live. listen. They're, they're, they give me nothing. <laughs> they give me nothing. You know what I'm saying? But they continue to flourish on my praise. That's so. one thing I think 2K can take from Madden is just adding like when they have the rookies come when the draft when the draft happens. Yeah. Throw them in the rookies. Throw throw them in there to be cards into my player. That would be nice. It would be. Nice, but I mean, they. I don't know. I feel like 2K is a little bit of a different game because it's like you don't know what these guys can do. Yeah. And at this point, those cards would be so bad that you know you really wouldn't. You really wouldn't want them. But uh, even if you put them in as rookies and then build them up, like it, depending, yeah. on, depending on how well you play with them, will be how. Don't have them on a on a uh, a canned. You know, what I mean, trajectory. Like, okay, we we figure this person's going to be this in year two, so we're going to have this guy be this. Make Man, it to where your play matters. They should give a summer league. That would yeah. be dope. It like after the league. NBA season is over, yeah. give us summer league yeah. and let put, us put run with these. Ball yeah. on the sideline and everything, man. <laughs> Have it all the way out there because I think he's gonna be he's gonna be a character. But I think he's good for uh, the big baller brand. Big she baller is gonna brand, be on man. the uh, on the game. So yes, they will. Yeah, got yes, to. they will. They have to be. They have to be. They have to have to be. So before we get into Lamar Ball, let's talk about his draft a little bit. Okay. So the results came in. They had the draft lottery yesterday. They did. Uh, let's see the, the 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 Celtics, which I think is cheesy, got the number one pick. Let's stop right yeah. there for a second. Do you keep that draft pick? I don't know. I from the player pool, mm-hmm. it, it's tough because it's like, man, do you pick up a player that you don't really need in the draft, or do you pick up? A free agent or trade for somebody that's already in the league because who who's really worth trading the number one pick for? Even if you, unless you just like maybe move back and get a piece like mm-hmm. if the Knicks 
maybe give up that what seven eight seed mm-hmm. and give up Melo and Przingis. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. We talked about that before. That's, yeah, that's like a lot. listen, but the Knicks they're there and in that franchise. So you know yeah, what I'm saying. You kind of Melo, you have to give him away just on GP. Like I mean, he's just bonus. At this point, you owe it to him. I yeah. mean, you really let a, a, yeah. a prime player rot in his prime. Yeah, I mean, you know. But I mean, at that point, if you're the Knicks, you have to, uh, as much as you've sullied his name, you just got to be happy to get him off of the books. Absolutely. That's why you got to give up Porzingis too. Absolutely, plus all the bad you know? blood. But okay, so no, you don't give up Porzingis. Means so. <laughs> so hold on, let's stop at the Celtics there. If you, I think that they're in a very, very weird position right now because, and I hate to even say it like this, but LeBron James has people really in a very, very bad space. LeBron is probably what maybe four, maybe five elite years left. To where uh, he literally, you as long as he's in the lot. East, that's a lot. Maybe four, maybe three, maybe four. four. Okay, I give you three or three to four. Yeah. The only reason why I say maybe even four or five is because the game's getting easier for him. The game is getting so much easier for him. I'm and I'm gonna be interested to know what LeBron looks like when he loses a step. He got to evolve. His game has evolved. It is evolving, but a lot of it is still you know hey power yeah. into the hoop. He knows it, this. it is power into the hoop, but so. hey, you can't be stopped. So, yeah. so, anyways, when I say all that, now you're the Celtics, right? You have to have scoring, right? I mean, going into they start tonight. They the the Celtics and the and the Cavs start tonight. Yes, you got to have scoring in order to beat the Cavs. Yeah, it absolutely. is your only scoring option right now. Not yeah. to mention going into this off season, it's his free agent year, which means you're going to have to open up the bank for two hundred mil to give this guy to stay. Yeah, you have to pay him. You don't let him walk. So, yeah. do you take Fultz at one? If you, that's another point guard. You can't play Fultz and um, it, on the it at the same time. time. And how much do we know about Fultz? All I hear about is all this stuff about him. He's good. And don't get me wrong. He passes my eye test as far as thinking he's good, but he's a scorer. Whereas I look at Lonzo Ball, and that I think he's just going to make people better, man. Uh, Yeah, he's going to be a facilitator, man. He, he can do a lot of things well, but mm-hmm. I don't know that he's the right fit for the Celtics. Um, but do you keep the pick? Oh, man, that's tough because, I mean, who do you get in the draft if you do keep the pick? So, but who do you trade the pick for? Or I don't what know. Do you that's that's the another good that's question. That's kind of yeah. where it's like, uh, that's they're stuck question. in a tough spot. Because you don't need a point guard. You don't need a point unless unless you move on from it. I guess right. that, that's really I, the only other I thing. I just don't see them doing that. That's tough because I mean you're you're getting rid of the guy that got you to the Eastern Conference Finals and then you're saying okay you, we're willing to give you up for a bag of chips on an unknown <laughs> product. You know what I'm saying? Right, and so it's right. kind of like uh you're you're really in a tough spot. Right. I guess I would see how he performs through this series. Uh, you know if, if they can get a game against the Cavs, I feel like it has to stay. I think even at this point. If you're going to beat the Cavs, I mean, because if you let IT walk, that means you're just like, we're going to rebuild. We're just going to break it all up. Horford's yeah. getting older. You know, we're just going to break it all up and it'll be done. Whereas, though, if you keep IT and then you try to get assets, veteran assets, to go with him. Because think about it, man. I looked at a, um, a stat today. Most good players or like, you know, like Jimmy Butler, your, your uh, Paul George, and um, the other, they don't get good until their fourth year. Right. You it know, takes a little time to develop. It takes time for it to develop, right? Yeah. So you think. If you get somebody like a Fultz, those four years, LeBron will be gone, you know, I mean, will be gone elite wise, and then you can, you know, step in and become good. So if you draft a Fultz, you got to know, I'm not going to beat LeBron in four years. It's going to take me at least four or five years to get to beat him because yeah. whoever I draft isn't going to be a significant part of it. Yeah, I mean, that that is tough. That you is know? tough. I mean, unless you can get somebody who can produce as, you know, a second, third option in that system right away. Yeah. You know, that that really would be kind of the best fit for the Celtics. But there are really no big players that are coming out, like pigs that are going to play anywhere from, you know, the small forward up through power forward. I, I really don't think you go center anymore in this right. league. But, you know, it's, it's just tough. They're yeah, in a tough it spot. It is. <laughs> they it have is. nothing. It is. And I'll tell you another thing that makes it hard, too, is so many times people draft on potential. And that gets people. Fired. I mean, that's what you have to do. You I do. mean, that's what you have to you do. You do. It's a gamble. It's a yeah. gamble. Anyway, even I guess even a veteran, you can gamble by by uh, but, picking uh, up. You know. But the 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 pick of the litters is, is kind of tough. The only the only move I could really see that made sense we talked about earlier was Paul George. And even though I don't think Paul George is worth mm-hmm. uh, you know a first a first pick, but uh, I mean, if as you're far the Celtics, as, though. But okay, I, I agree. I agree with everything you're saying. But if you're the Celtics, he's a better fit for that team right now. Thank you. That's yeah. all. That's all I'm yeah. asking. Okay, so if you put you put Paul George with it. And Horford, Crowder, some other pieces there. Yeah, I think that you you could you could get a strong push going yeah, there. Okay, you've got somebody to counter LeBron and Kyrie okay. at that point. Because because my thing about it too though is and this is history is proven. All right, and I looked this up. And Colin Cowherd brought it up as well, and I wanted to look. I did do some fact checking. <laughs> okay, the first two picks 
historically, one of them are going to be a bust. Ooh. Historically, there's never been one and two that have been good. Hey, going listen. all the way back to like I forget what year he went, we went back to, and I start looking and say, "Wow, the number one and two pick, they never pan out." Yeah, I mean that has that has held true for a while now. We've yeah. got a lot of busts at that number one spot. Yeah. It, it, it's tough to really come out and produce. I think when you fly under the radar, sometimes. It, it works out a little bit better for you, both because you end up on better teams, mm-hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying, getting better coaches rather than trying to rebuild a franchise. It, that's tough. Yeah. That's a lot That's a lot to ask, you know, an 18, 19, 20-year-old kid to do. Like, Absolutely, Come man. and fix the Sixers. Yes. Like, you know, I, I know that's team. My are... bad. But, you okay, know, hey, well, yeah. <laughs> you know I know that's your squad. That's my bad. That's my bad. But you yeah, know that they're yeah. good. They're a good, uh, they're a good <laughs> example there. They are. Now, you know, the Sixers, are, they're in a good position right now. They get one of those guards. That would be good. But um, So, moving on to number two. Yeah. So, the Lakers are going to take Lonzo Ball. That's a no-brainer, right? Looks like it. Looks that way. He's the best player in the draft, man. Take his <sighs> take his dad out of the equation. If you watch him play, man, that team He's won. He's good. I think that team won, like, what, 13 games the year before? He comes yeah. in. And, like, the thing with me is I hear, like, one thing I love about um, – the um the Cavaliers road tripping podcast. I love mm-hmm. hearing other players talk about players. You know, because I mean? me and you as a casual fan, we do we. And I think we're a little different. We feel like we know a lot about basketball. Yeah. So we're different from the casual fan. But when you hear another player express their how they look at a player and be like you know how good they are, I I listen to Eddie House. I listen to uh, um 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 Legler talk about <clears throat> Alonzo Ball. Yeah. And all of them said that they pass the he passes the eye test, whereas kind of like a, a quarterback, how some quarterbacks like Kaepernick will just pass to you when you're open, whereas like a Brady will pass you open. And that's what they said with Lonzo does, where he can anticipate where you're at, where you want to get in the sweet spot. Kind of like how we talk about LeBron. He does create. He does create. Yeah, kind of like that. LeBron, you know, will pass the ball. He's doing research to see where Corver liked to catch the ball in order for him to get his best shot off. Yeah. They say he's a student like that. And I think with the you, you remove man, the LeVar factor from him, I think dude's going to be a special player. I, I'm. It, it's too early for me to say. <laughs> it's too early for me to say. You know, we, we hear a lot of these players get hyped up for a long time. I mean, the Lakers, uh, I mean, who'd they just get, what, last year that was, uh, you know, pretty uh, much. Pretty, Ingram. Yeah, Brandon Ingram. Yeah. Haven't heard much from him. Ben Simmons, he's going to be a rookie next year. Yep. You know, you just never know with these guys, man. It's a roll of the dice, man. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the Lakers have gotten a lot of those players. I mean, D'Angelo Russell's still developing, man. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh uh, my other guy, yeah, Julius Randle. Yeah, I Randall. mean, still trying to develop, and I mean, these were supposed to be big name talents that were coming out that you know they could do everything the way but, that they played the game. A point guard that can facilitate to that offense. That's what Russell was supposed to be, man. Point rat messed himself up, man. I, listen, at the end of the day, <laughs> as far as what happens on that basketball court, man, he he's a very good basketball player. He's maybe more of a scorer than you would like in yeah, a point guard. Yeah. So moving him to the two, I do think Lakers do best to keep him if they do Absolutely. get Lonzo. Absolutely. Move him to the uh, two. Move him to the two. Yeah. Exactly. He's big enough to play the two. Exactly. Yeah. Let uh, let Julius Randle and Ingram, if Ingram is healthy, let them kind of fight out the 3-4 uh, the, the position who's yeah. going to go where. Even though I think Randle has to go to the four. Yeah. He'd be more like a Draymond, a high motor guy. Yeah. Um, and then uh, for center, maybe try to pick up, what, Okafor? Somebody or yeah, I mean you could. I mean right now it's like everyone is just trying to be just put a, a viable thing out there to maybe compete with either the Cavs or the Warriors. That's what you have to do, but it's only going to be like that for a couple more years before for those it. teams start falling apart. I mean LeBron's going to get old. Yeah, the Warriors. I don't. I don't know that all four of those players stay there forever. Clay's out. You know. Yeah, Clay I think, bangs I out. I think Clay bangs out. He's already got one foot out. I think he wants to be the man on the team. Um. But I well I, I take it like this I would he's the only one I can see leaving yeah because I think Dre's the goon he's the most intricate part to that team Dre already got his money yeah too. Dre got his money they yes. got to Gary pay Steph Steph's about to re up you know, and Clay's uh, got his money at Clay's the got his money heck Durant's only one year he could theoretically he could leave this off season too nah Katie's staying getting Katie's that back. gonna stay he's yeah. gonna stay yeah. um but I don't know man I, I don't oh. think that team but all these teams got to basically put assets together in order to put a viable team out here I think for players like CP3. Um, AKA CP0, Melo, <laughs> Paul George. It's going to be a very telling summer for these guys. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Because they want to be, you know, go down and get rings and, and be great too. Does but the draft have a big impact on any of that though? Only reason why I say the draft might is because of upside. We look at a lot of these teams are drafting on upside and shoot, man, it could either win 
or it could backfire. Yeah. I'm surprised a lot of GMs haven't killed themselves. To be honest with you, it sounds wow. like a stressful job. Wow. Yeah, it sounds like a very it's only stressful. basketball. Hey, no, it ain't. no, it's not. It's not <laughs> hey, listen, just... the worst that can happen is they will fire you. It's okay. Yeah, you got money in the bank, you'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, I mean, I just look at I, mean, I, I listen to like NFL coaches how they live and breathe football. Yeah, they're here yeah. all day long. They're away from their families and everything like that. And I guess I would kind of think it was the same way in basketball. As you know, I say that. I'm no, sure I, I feel you. I feel you. I want to log <laughs> off from point from you know, draft decisions. Sheesh. But the only one I will say that might have wanted to kill himself though was my man for OKC he uh, had Harden Scott Brooks no not, not the coach he no, had Harden okay. yeah, he drafted yeah, yeah. Harden that Westbrook. front office is yeah. completely inept yeah, yeah so, and I want somebody to go out to OKC with my boy Russ man just had a son congratulations with that man yeah I, I definitely would like for somebody to see it, go play with that that dude man so but I don't know man I think the uh, the Sixers are at three so they'll probably end up getting a, a dud to be honest with you the kid from Kansas I like him but they need a point man so hopefully the Celtics do something silly. They're gonna pick a big. Yeah, they're gonna have to. Who it is? Nah, they don't need them though. Uh, the the Sixers are gonna pick another big man. They lost Nerlens Noel. They need a third big in there for no reason at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> that, that would be what they used to do: is building up assets instead of building a team. They need a guard. Yeah. And the rumors they're going after uh, Lowry. So um, we'll see. What you know what? That, that could be nice if MB gets healthy. If, if Simmons gets healthy, but I mean mm-hmm. that's a lot of ifs and buts. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if you go that way. Yeah, I mean, shoot, you got to think the Timberwolves are probably the team that young wise are pretty much next to be the next yeah, one. Yeah, they're up. the next young up and comers, man. Yeah. But the Lakers could be right there, man. They're you know the hey, right draft. One hit away, exactly. Yeah, the right draft pick. They could. So, um, yeah, but t- so will Levar, will Lavar be at the games? At the Lakers games? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Sitting right next to Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Better believe that, man. He's going to become uh, he's gonna become a GM here in a second. I, I like the dude, man. Assistant I, GM. Yeah, he's going to be out there. They're going they're gonna to. Have a, Magic can, ha- can handle it, though. I oh, like, yeah. I mean, I'm, Showtime's got a big personality. Absolutely. So I, he definitely knows how to manage people, absolutely. I'm sure. Or he'll get him in that corner and threaten to bite him or something. Like, you know? <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> not touching it. that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna scoot over right by there. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Believe that. Anyway, so <laughs> to go about the playoffs, but let's talk about it. So the Cavs start with the uh, the Celtics. That series starts tonight. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in it, man. I think the Celtics are going to be a lot tougher than you know people think. But I wanted to ask you though. So what do you think about the Cavs? Are have been waiting, you know, to play for someone. They they've been pretty much playing backgammon and and spades for this last time. You know, just resting up, and yeah. then you got a team coming fresh off of a loss i mean a win against uh the the series they had in game seven so who do you think has the advantage in this point uh i think kelly olenek is going to injure somebody he's at least <laughs> going to get that off but i still think that the Cavs sweep you yeah. know that's going to be the most unfortunate part about the series is that uh, olenek's gonna he might you know get that revenge on kevin love and you know just get suspended for the year or whatever uh, but uh i don't i don't see the celtics getting a game like they don't have enough talent uh yeah. to to really go up against uh cleveland so yeah i think it's gonna be it. it's gonna be potential on brouhaha tonight um De- uh, dante jones was put on the roster for this game and this game only <laughs> he's gonna come in and feel a flying elbow at the man bun hey, tonight hey go for you it know, man. that's they, what you're the here Cavs, for the Cavs haven't forgot that uh they're they're you know not the previous year not last year the year before last Protect Kevin Love yeah, at all costs. He took him out. Protect Kevin Love at all costs, man. He dislocated Kevin Love's um, arm, I mean elbow, and it was a clear, dirty play. It was. You know what I mean? So I think Dante Jones got off the bench, a la Rick Mahorn, and uh, lets his elbow accidentally run into Kelly Olenek's temple. Hey, I think that's going to happen today. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I thought maybe he'd come in with like that Bruce Bowen like ninja uh, kick. Not the ninja uh, kick, Give him that Wally Zerbiak, you know, yeah, nah, real you know, quick. Nah, just, you know, just go in there unless you got to watch in a slow moment. It's real, you know, <laughs> a little chicken wing right to the side, man. You know, nudge him a little bit. Man, so. I think the Cavs walk them, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I know IT is going to play hard, but I just think that they run out of talent at yeah. some point there. So, yeah, it is what it is. So, the other series, um, Spurs and uh, Warriors. It was like a JV game yesterday. <laughs> it was like, bro, I laid I laid the Twins down, and I came back to the TV, and they were down fifteen. Man, it was that quick. The Warriors just they can just score so many different ways, and KD is like we're we're not talking about it, but KD is on fire. Okay, like he can just knock down buckets any way he wants. K- like nobody K- can stop him. KD in this in this offense is like Brandon Cooks with the uh, with the Patriots next year. It's gonna be a complete issue. It just is like a perfect match, you Brand, know. Brandon Cook's not going to do nothing, but but you know, but, uh, you know uh, K, KD now KD uh-huh. is going to continue to produce, man, because he, like he's just always open, and even if he's contested, I mean, you saw LA had to try to close out on him like that, mm-hmm. and you know, KD they, they're winning by so much, he's like, oh no, I don't care, he can do whatever he wants because yeah. he's not going to stop me. 
Only so, thing, only thing that's stuck, like, that can save people from the Warriors is if Clay Thompson's um, asked for a fair one with KD. <laughs> that's the only thing, and then KD gets. He'll wait to the end of the uh, yeah. the, uh, the, end of the if, season. If I'm Clay, I want I want I want uh, some alone time with KD. No no uh, pause. <laughs> I, I definitely want to talk to him because he came in and put a dent, and uh, he's messing with my money at this point. I mean, at this point, you really can't be mad at KD. Like KD is out here on fire. Like yeah. Well, I mean, what can you do? I be mad at Kerr or something, but uh, you can't be you, mad at KD. I'm gonna tell you, man. The more I watch Golden State play the uh the more i kind of forgiving kd for making this move it's like it makes so much sense like it's like it's like watching them play it makes sense but it, it still sucks like I'll it, never no, it that. sucks I'll never you know i know that. you know it's a touchy subject because you, yeah. you know it's all lebron i'm not gonna get down that path but i'm just saying just basketball wise as a cat as a fan who i can watch it it's just it's like watching the spurs when they were young it's like the open player, and, and you just find the open guy. And I do think we, we agree to disagree on what is their strong suit, which I think is their run-and-gun aspect. You you know, you're the picking as far as setting picks and stuff, which I think Bogut gave him that last year, which was setting the picks and everything. Zaza came. Man, I, you know, I was hoping that you were watching that game yesterday. Uh-huh. So that way I could have pointed out some of those plays, too, because they're very sneaky the way that they run those screens. You may not actually see it. No, I do. But I, know, I know exactly. Did you, did you see when uh, when Steph hit that, uh, hit that three? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it, it was on the foul. Yeah. Did he, you notice the two he, screens yes. that were set right there? But like, you notice how he passed the ball and sprinted to the to the three point line and away from the I mean off the picks. Oh yeah. And I then, mean I mean that's what you do off of a yeah, pick. Yeah. But I mean you they set two screens high. So it was like if Steph didn't have a shot right there, K D was already cutting to the basket off yeah. of another screen. Yeah, it's cheese. And that that's where they eat. Like, it's definitely it's definitely it's cheese. just no stop. But they also eat on the fast break too. You, when you miss You a have shot, to eat on the fast break. Everybody eats on the fast break. Not like them. And, they are the only team that will they literally hit threes. Like if you miss a shot, that's why I was trying to. We were mm-hmm. we were talking that night. If you hit, if you do not score on them, they get that thing and they are out. See, where I would disagree with that is a tempo team like what you're describing. I would more so say that Houston is a tempo team like that. Mm-hmm. Houston, when you get them into sets, that's where they struggle. Like they want to make quick passes and get shots up quickly, and they want to do it in succession. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Golden State, like they'll they'll stop and they'll run their sets. Their sets may go fast, but they're actually running plays. Whereas mm-hmm. Houston, it was kind of like, hey, listen, James Harden handles either streaks to the basket or we'll set him a screen and he streaks to the basket. This one, everything moves in that offense, mm-hmm. and it looks like it's just going fast because they rotate the ball so quickly and they do get a lot of fast break points. But that comes up in the way that they play defense on the other end. So yeah. with it, that the team is just complete juggernaut. Like it it, it's ridiculous. It is. It, it's it, ridiculous. It, it is, man. I just you know being devil's advocate, I just kind of. I don't want to dispel the Cavs because I do think the Cavs, they can shoot the ball too. Yeah, absolutely. They got some very good shooters, and I, I want them to come win. But I just, want, I wish we could just fast forward it and just. I mean, we pretty finals. much fast forward the, the the conference finals. Like we, I think it's pretty clear what's going to happen. Yeah. I guess we'll see how this Cleveland Boston matchup goes. But after the way the Spurs got beat, if Kawhi doesn't come back uh, playing like himself, I don't expect him to be a hundred percent. But if he mm. doesn't come back and really give the Spurs a push, like they're done. It's There's nothing else. Game there. three and four are very big. Yeah, you know, yeah. they have to. The the Spurs have to hold serve, and I mean they have to win. It's really no ifs ands ways about it. it. How they come out in game three is going to be indicative on if the series is over or not. Yeah, I mean Pop, like when Pop comes out and says like you know I think that they were scared mm-hmm. uh, without Kawhi they'd already gave up this game. Like I've never heard Pop talk like that before. Nah. Like that he, that's ridiculous. I think he might as well have just got a microphone and, and stared at Lamarcus Aldridge just when he said that because. And then Powell's old, and I, yeah. I, you know he's real long in the two. Listen, one thing I will say, man, Powell's down there banging with KD. He's trying. He's trying. He's giving he, him everything he's definitely he can. Trying. Like, I he's, think he's trying to give him a little bit. Powell needs to realize he's how old he is. He's going against the the current young bull right now because yeah. he's going to try to get fouls and stuff. You, you're not getting that call, pal. Right? <laughs> no, you're not getting that call. He's he trying to make veteran moves, man. I he ain't is, mad at he, him. He's he doing a veteran scream, and you know what I mean. Yeah, like, that's what you gotta on. do, man. You gotta get that team fired up. Yeah. I like it. I like it. But San Antonio, man, they they may have just ran out of talent too. It's bad luck. Yeah, I, I mean, like for a team, I like Jay Simmons though. I ain't gonna lie. I like Simmons too. I like him. And I, you know, I mean, his story is amazing. It how is, he, how he paid for yeah, a tryout to get into the yeah. D League, man. Grinded it out. I really yeah. like his story, man. Twenty six year old rookie. Absolutely. I, I rock with him. But uh, yeah, I, the Spurs got a lot of good pieces. I think that they'll be okay. They but do. Not this series. No, they're this not. Is, gonna they're, be okay. they're, they're against too yeah. much of a juggernaut, and they're yeah. focused. I think the worst thing that could have happened for everybody is that they lost last year because they're back and they're focused. Now, we'll say though, just fast forwarding a little bit because we do we do think that Cleveland and Golden State are going to play each other. Yep. Those matchups are going to be interesting because Iguodala's banged up and he was the one that did prim- primarily guarded LeBron yeah. on that end. So we'll see what LeBron... He's been resting though. I, I, don't, I don't even remember seeing him game two. 
I think he because his, his knee hurt. His knee is hurt. Yeah, so, I, you know what? They can afford that. He can. He yeah, can yeah, sit he down can chill for a while. Out, yeah, yeah, he, he can yeah. chill out. So they would ever think we'd say that they could chill out against the Spurs? You know, right? It hurts, but they got a lot of pieces, man. Even when I started looking at that bench, I was like, ooh, ooh, they got a lot of guns, a lot of veterans on that bench, and yeah, uh, I Matt like what Barnes. they get even from the young guys. Has Matt Barnes been playing at all? Yeah, man, Matt Barnes was out there getting his goon on, man, giving you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and they got David West, who's a goon yeah, too. Another goon, man. Yeah. Another, uh, they got I goons. like it, man. They got attitude. Zaza's out here. He's he's trying to get a contract, man. He he don't want to leave. Like okay, here's the thing with Zaza. Like everyone, everyone asked me about like, is it a dirty play? Yes, and no. <laughs> okay, yes, it's a it's one of those things where it's it's dirty, but it's like one of those gentleman rules where you just you don't do it. Right. But Zaza has to do it because I mean, that's yeah, you not that's it his out. edge. Right. Like, okay, guys like him, Patrick Beverly. If you say that they don't do that, they're not NBA. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's they got to play that, that, that dirty defense. Yes, they got to so, play yeah. that like De- like De Dova. De- Everyone thought he was playing dirty, diving on the floor, being all aggressive. His body was in there. Listen, if De Dova doesn't play that way, he's no longer in the NBA. Yeah, yeah. You, you got to be mean? scrappy like that. You got Zaza has to be scrappy, man. I yeah. love his dump, the way he yeah, acts he, like he's he been dumb. playing good. Yeah, he has he been. been. good. I mean, because he's filling that Bogut role. You know, he's not yeah. a, he's not a, as good as a rim protector as Bogut. He's not as good as a passer as Bogut. So, hey. He got to do everything he can. Yeah. And if it means getting out there and doing, a, you know, and, and, and getting a flagrant two, then that's what you got to do. Man, he getting them offensive boards, man, and he's scoring when he needs to. So, it's like, what more can you ask for? Second chance points are yeah. huge, especially a team that can knock down the three like that. So Absolutely. It's man. ridiculous. So, we won't see the greatness of Zaza and Golden State <laughs> until Cleveland, man. So, we got to wait a couple weeks. Yeah, we're going to see, yeah. man. We're going to see how that goes. We definitely will see. Let's go Cavs. Yeah, no doubt. All right, man. So, what are we listening to? Yeah. All right, so what have I been listening to? I've been listening to L.A. Uh, you still haven't listened to that album yet. Yeah, what's L.A.? Um, R&B. R&B. Uh, you know, it's I'm R&B. saying, who, what, what's the album? Or what, what What is that? What uh, is it? It's, uh, what is it? It's e- E-H-L-A-E, I think is how you spell it. Yeah. I um. Know. Yeah, yeah. but I'll send it to you. It's, okay. actually, it's actually not bad. Okay. I've been checking out uh, Bryson Tiller's singles. Um, Bryson needs to stay in that trap soul lane because if he doesn't, I think he's done. Um. I don't know if even I'm excited for another Bryson Tiller album. Put it that way. I, feel like I just don't know if uh, he's going to be featured out. I mean, we kind of just up in the air, so I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. I feel you. Um, what else do I listen to? Shh, went back and listened to Catronada once again. I think I, I just revisited how good that one was. That was the excellent. song with, with Craig David. It came on my playlist. I was like, man, I forgot how dope this album was. And uh, Kendrick, man, that's really it, really. I can dig that, man. Yeah. Uh, man, I've been digging back in on that Thundercat. Like, yo, that was such a good album. Like, yeah. I, I really felt like it, it slipped under the radar, but man, that album is fantastic. I've really been focusing on projects that I can let play front to back. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I've just been finding myself just kind of starting an album and letting it run. Uh, I've been running that uh, Sanfa's process, still an absolutely yeah, amazing that album. Too, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm gonna tell you something else. I've been getting a lot of run. Um, Endless. I've been playing Endless a lot, way really? more than Blonde lately. I don't know why, man. Like Endless was actually a little bit of a slept on record. It got I, you already know I like Endless better. You uh, like Blonde. I, I, like, I like Blonde. I really yeah. like Blonde. But Endless was a great record as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know Kendrick, man. Um, I can't really say more life. I've been listening to Free Smoke and uh, uh, Galchester or whatever, man. Those are my two jams. Yeah. And, uh, and my man Batman, da da da. KMT, kiss my teeth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I rock with gigs, man. I like gigs now. Uh, you know, hey, the man. Bruno Mars uh, remix, uh, Twenty Four Carat with. Uh, Party Next Door is dope too. Okay, uh, I yeah, like I've, been, I've been listening. Travis's that. new singles. Yeah, you know. the Travis's new singles. They've been uh, they've been pretty good, man. I, I'm not gonna lie. I've, I've still been kind of in a funny spot with rap music. Like it's been a little bit tough. I find myself kind of uh, venturing out to other projects more to uh, to listen to or even look forward to. But uh, yeah, man, a lot of a lot of good stuff has been coming out, if nothing else. Yeah, I think what it comes to that is is the uh, the rappers. Either you got your spitters who might not be talking about anything. And then you have your uh, your R and B cats who want to rap that don't really sound too you know good either. So we're getting a lot of the same. Like yeah. like we were talking about EXO tour life or whatever, mm-hmm. and I'm just like you know this record sounds like everything else. Like mm-hmm. you know it, it it didn't even really sound like Uzi to me. It sounded like I forget who it even sounded like. Um, but it, it sounds like a completely different record, but it sounds like everything that's out there, man. It sounds like Migos. Is, yeah. Uh, not really like Travis. I would say Travis does have his own sound. That, he's the one. I think him, uh, Quavo, is doing that as well. But he's kind of like a clone of Travis, who's a clone of Kid Cudi. So, you know, I don't know. Like, can, can a Quavo... I think Quavo is the one that kids like. I mean, they love... And the kids love Uzi. They love Yachty. 
And uh, but Travis is the one that kind of like even for us, it sounds good. It's can, it's catchy. Yeah, it's a catchy. lot of times it's really catchy. But it's actually if you if you listen to him, he's going. Yeah, you know, even like the verse he put on uh on um Drake's album. You know, I might just you know I might just you know get the do rag and cut the braids. You know, rock the way. Like he's really going on that on that song. Um, but I, you know, yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do, man? Yeah, what are you gonna know. do? I don't know. It's, it's been a weird place right now, especially on, on the rap front. Yeah, but it's been that way for a couple for a while now. It has, man. I, that's why Kendrick's album was so refreshing uh, yeah. when it finally came around. But uh, outside of that, like, I don't, I don't have any rap albums or even really rap songs that I've been listening to consistently. Like, I always find myself kind of venturing into that soul, R and B, alternative rock yeah. kind of vibe. I think with uh, some of the rap we've been getting, because some of it's been pretty good, like Cole, um, Joey Badass, even Logic's yeah. album. But you listen to him, and you're just like, eh, I'm done with it. Yeah. you know, it, and, and, it, and it sucks, but that's just kind of how I've been. I'm going to tell you another album that's really been kind of bugging me that I haven't gotten back to is Sid's album. I really oh, liked it yeah. when we listened to it that week, but I, I, I haven't listened to it since. I played the heck out of it so much after that. Like, I, man. Now, like, I listened, and I enjoyed it, and then I moved on. Like, I, I think right after that, we got Sanfa, and I was like, mm. oh, I'm off of that. <laughs> and uh, But I really want to revisit that and yeah. uh, kind of see what's there. But I don't know. Like, it, there have been a lot of albums like that that came out were really good, but they didn't really stick. I don't know, for whatever reason. Yeah. 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 I don't know, man. Like it might be, you know, it sounds like you're in a weird place with music, kind of, or rap music, kind of like I was with video games for a while. Yeah. And once something comes along that moves you, if again, it's fire, it's fire. Yeah, it's yeah, fire, no it's fire. It'll come back. I think you're tired all this sing rapping though. I am. I'm tired yeah. of everything meshing. All right, man. So Travis Scott. All right. So he got arrested for inciting a riot. Yeah. Uh, he performed Goosebumps 14 times in a row <laughs> to a new record uh, previously held by the Throne. Yep. And uh, dropped three new tracks. But I, I told you earlier, he did remix one of them, which sounds a heck of a lot better Word. than it did. And that's what I like about SoundCloud. Especially for artists like Travis or any big artist, you know, you put a song out and it's like, okay, I remi- I, I redid it, so check it out now. It's right there. You gotta wait for it to come out, and it sounds a lot better. So it's like a throwaway track, you know. I, I thought three new tracks. I think that they're leading to something big coming up because I mean, two of those were hits, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, that uh, that butterfly effect. I felt like that song was really yeah, really good. That's the one he remixed. That's okay, the, and yeah. then a man was pretty good too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't I didn't I, like the one Playboy Cardi. That one was a little bit tougher to digest, but uh, and, like I mean, his energy right now, like Travis is on ten, like he's yeah. got the world in front of him right now. Absolutely. I, I think that he could really own the summer. That was one thing I noticed about these songs. They had a, a much more lively feel to them, like they were much more energetic whereas i felt like his last project was a little bit more you know kind of uh i don't want to say dreary or it, it was a little bit darker mm-hmm. uh it was a little bit more mellow whereas now i think that he's he's ready to get back to hype god status even though i gave uh butterfly birds in a trap same ignite i gave it my album of the year last year when i went as i listen to it, i still have it on my phone i listen to it it almost sounds like it's almost too polished at certain points whereas like it, it might have been trying to make a good song. And I, I don't want to sound like I don't like, because st- I still love the album, but I think that it was it was a little bit cookie-cutter-ish, yeah. being that, you know, having the right person on the right track, which I can appreciate, but I want you to get out there and just emotion. If, you, if, it, if it means get out there and playing Goosebumps 14 times in a row, do it. You know what I mean? And I think that's what he's doing <laughs> that now. That seems like a, a god-awful experience Man, for a his, concert. He like, his concerts are just crazy energy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Inciting a riot. All he did was play music. Yeah. You know I what mean, I mean? That's pretty dope. That's yeah. pretty dope. So that's what the kids are gravitating to, man. So, yeah. you know. But, yeah, I, I think he definitely has it, man. I, you know, I like Travis, man. I like his energy. Yeah. All right. So, one thing I don't like, all right? And I'm going to put it up here. I want you guys to check this picture <laughs> out of Little Uzi Vert. I mean, you talked about this before. You were saying he did what he was supposed to do, which got people talking. Yeah. I get it. But... I don't like this appropriation of what's coming out with with music now. I don't like Cam Newton rocking the rompers. I don't like any of that crap, man. Like dudes need to be dudes, man. And quit trying to push your culture. Before, okay, put it this way: before we saw Kanye, right? He rock a, a, a book bag with a teddy bear on it. That's yeah. about as close as cats would push it. Now we got cats wearing complete blouses with purses and the the thing in their nose and, and all that. Like not really any different than what they were doing in the eighties, but I get it. I get it, and our and our parents in the '80s talked about us doing doing stupid stuff like that as well, yeah. wearing leather pants and. Yo, I ain't gonna lie, that the baggy phase. Like now, looking back at it, it's <laughs> oh, like it's man, horrible. yeah, it was horrible, man. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It the Jenko jeans and the five XLTs, like it was, it was not great. It was, it was very bad. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, what these kids are doing now, man, like some of it's good, some of it's not, man. Uh, but these guys, they know what they're doing at this point, and I, I definitely feel like uh, for a guy like Little Uzi Vert, it's like free publicity man you went viral like you you couldn't pay for this kind of publicity i mean you know off of one picture 
And he was everywhere. Everybody was talking about him. He didn't have to do anything crazy. All he did was put on a shirt, man. The mm-hmm. game is so different now, though. Like, these, these rappers, like, half of them, you don't even know them from their music. You know them from, you know, the, the Instagram antics and, you know, the beefing on Twitter and all the all the extra stuff. Like, uh, the XXX Tentacion dude. Mm-hmm. Have you heard Look At Me? No. Exactly. But you know his name. You know what he looks yeah, like. You're right. You know, uh, why? Because he was throwing shots at Drake. He was out here acting wild. Like, that's what you know about him. Like, the game is just different. This is a rapper in the game, and you haven't heard any of his music. Like, that that's unheard of. It sounds to me like if you're doing that, though, that you're 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 kind of... I don't want to say exploiting the game, but you're like, you're not respecting it. You know I, what mean, I mean, it's been happening since the beginning, man. It, it's but, just now they have more platforms of attention. Yeah, but you got to know if you do your history on it, those guys don't make it. You know, the ones who just make good, I mean, good Most music. of these guys ain't going to make it. I feel like they, they <laughs> I mean, that's no disrespect, but I mean. I ain't going to say most guys are going to make it. They're gonna say it's not I mean, just look, just look at the history of it, man. Like, I mean, you only get so many hoes. Like, there's one hove. There's not so many hoes. Everybody going to be hove. Everybody going to be Dre You know what I'm saying? Point, You're not all going to be Snoop. You're not right. all going to be Dre. Like, how many producers have fall by the wayside? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, how many... Like you, you've got a much more, uh, you got a trajectory that's more to go DJ Yella more than you got Dr. Dre. You know what I'm saying? And that's no disrespect to DJ Yella, right? You know he okay. he's a legend in the game, but you're only gonna get so many of these guys. Like I mean, if you ask me, a lot of these old legends are disrespected now for the work that they put in, and they made it way bigger than these other artists. But it's the game done changed. You know what I'm saying? You can't yeah. keep up. I'd rather do a fake beef than put on a damn blouse, man. You know what I mean? I, just, I mean, the fake beef, it, 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 it kind of got to the point where it's played out now. It is. You know it what is. I'm saying? I'm like, people ain't checking for it. I'm game for that. I mean, uh, uh, Black Youngster. Yeah. yeah uh, I, I've never even heard a song from Black Youngster. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I couldn't tell you that either. And you know, but get, I know I, who he is. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I'm at a point where I don't want to sound like the old man on the fence and don't like any of the new acts. I do like some <laughs> of these new guys, but it's like just make the music and that will we'll listen to it. I guess they feel like they have to do these things. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I, I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't know. Hey, man, listen. They got to get that attention, man. Keep the eye on them now. I mean, you know, hey, the music is hot right now. Two years from now, it might not be anymore. Like it might be over for these guys. Right. And I'm not saying it, they'll still be able to thrive. I mean, Soldier Boy's still out here thriving. But uh, I, I don't know if I should say thrive, but he's still out here existing. But, you know, you don't hear any music. Uh, yeah. It, it's a different space. Now we have la- rappers and we have celebrities at this point. Like, yeah. And a lot of these guys who do rap, they just happen to be celebrities who rap. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, that, that's kind of the conclusion I'm coming to. You have the actual real rappers who care about the artistry and, you know, the, the, the craft, the culture. Mm-hmm. And then you have these celebrities who dibble and dabble in rap music. Yeah, get a little bit of tour money and bang out. Yeah, hey, why not? Go on Love and Hip Hop, man. Get, do what you got to do. Shout to Fetty Wap. <laughs> yeah. Ah. <laughs> Is he done? Okay. Uh, hey, listen, man, come out with another 1738 or whatever, man. Like, hey, whatever. We'll, it'll be Remy Boy's summer again. But uh, until then, man, you he, he just, you know, hey, just Love and Hip Hop. Whatever. Guess, yeah, he's on the map. I mean, he got two girls that are fighting over him, and he's on Instagram with a whole new chick. I guess she's from here too. So. Hey, good for him, man. Yeah, yeah, out, hey, yeah. keep on, keep on living, bro. Hey, man. Keep, I was gonna say it, but forget it. All <laughs> right. So, um, so crazy stat you put in here, man. So Drake has been on yeah. the Billboard Top 100 every week since 2009. That's that's wild. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. <laughs> like that. That is crazy. You know, uh, sometimes I feel like we downplay Drake's run and the fact that he is still at not the us. peak of pop. Not not us, but yeah. as a culture, we kind of downplay the uh, the popularity of Drake. Like. I mean, like, this dude is dominating. He's, they want him out the paint. I'm telling you, the powers that be want him out of that position. I don't I don't think anybody can stop him. No, at himself. this point, you can't. Like, like, yeah, he's, he's such a machine. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. You can't. I mean, that goes back to what we were saying before when we reviewed um, the, the playlist. He's, like, at, like, Lionel Richie levels right now, man. Dude is, like, numbers-wise. He's huge. He's huge, man. Paul's, like, he's really at a... He's, his, the act of Drake is a very big act at this point. And for good reason. I yeah. mean, he's, he's got the, the whole package, man. He makes, you know, decent R&B songs, man. He makes good rap songs. Got a good show. Uh, you know, comes across funny. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, yeah. he, he gives comes you Comes across package. humble. Comes across humble in the in the public. I mean, I don't, yeah. you know. <laughs> I don't know behind the scenes. I don't know what he's like. The but, skitty did, right? With yeah, that was pretty funny. Plate, dudes. Yeah, it was yeah, a tree. Yeah. It was a tree, yeah. <laughs> That was like no force, but yeah. uh, that was pretty funny. But I mean, you know, hey, listen, you got to clap for the boy. Absolutely, I mean, hey, man. Yeah, absolutely. I don't take nothing away. You know, I'm a Drake fan, so I don't, I don't take nothing away from that. But I do think it, it, him being corny, him relishing the fact that he's corny, you know, in a way, 
he, you know, he. I think it, it makes him more approachable. It makes him, you know, more likable. Absolutely, because it's like, hey, listen, you don't have to be this, that, or the third to enjoy Drake. Like anybody can like him. It's for everybody. Absolutely, and you man. know, he doesn't have to kind of stray away from what he does. He can still do what he wants. And, yeah, you know, hey, it's a good spot to be in. You know, it hey, is. Drake created a a good lane for himself. So you know, gotta appreciate that. Yeah, man. Uh, one more thing I did want to touch on before What's we up? went, man. I, I don't know if you saw that report earlier, man. They saying the boy Hove finally yeah. hit that Billy. You oh, he hit a billion. Yeah, him and him and B. They they finally hit that Billy. Are we surprised though? I mean, yeah, you still got to clap. <laughs> you, do, I mean, you definitely got to clap for that. You definitely got to clap for that. But man. even when the, the hip hop we made, you it. listen to the old Jay interviews and you sent one to me today that I had already heard earlier. But it's yeah. like he came in this trying to be the best. He yeah. didn't hold anything about. Trying to be or wanting to be the best, so I like it. I like it's it. Old man. school. It's all you old can say is like you know, like you said, clap for him. But and it, they got more to come because B got the album about to drop. Yeah, they say Jay's in album mode too. It, well, it's just nice to see somebody winning out it here. Is. You know definitely what I'm saying? Is, so man. yeah, definitely dope. Definitely is. So for every testosterone, there's a Jay Z at end of the spectrum. So that makes me feel good about music. I'm, yeah, I'm okay I don't ever that. want that again. <laughs> 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 like that kind of hurts. That kind of hurts. That, you know. I'm just saying it's too introspective. Yeah, I, I, no, I feel That's you. I saying. feel you. But it, wow. uh, uh, yeah, bah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, SoundCloud. All right, man. So yo, so we, you know, big week. Got something to talk about. What do you guys think? You know, uh, Celtics wise, you like it walk, whatever. Anything we touched on, you guys want to talk about? Hit us up in the comments. We always answer everything. Always, always, man. But this is Nate Ear, one third of Super Group. That's Game Music Life. I'm your residential gamer, Nate Ear. This is Cal Kev, man. All them other things, you know about it. Yeah, yeah. You already know. You re- yeah. use all them things. Peace bro. to Jay. All them tings. Yeah, shout out to Jay, man. Yeah, Get better, my, my brother. Always. Yo, drink more water, people. Peace.